In Jesus' name we pray. And dear Lord, we thank you for today's message. We ask, Lord, that you bless us through your word as we keep looking at Hebrews and as we come to verse 5 today. We pray, Lord, that everything you want us to learn through the life of Enoch, teach us and bless us through that life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can please be seated. We come back to Hebrews 11. As you can tell, the church has been on Hebrews chapter 11. And as you look at, uh, sometime I, I could say it was a deliberate act to say um, the pastor could be preaching it and be going ahead of me. Why I take my time and come just gradually after you. Uh, because I'm aware that those of us in our churches and in our various regions. Right now, some of us may have been in verse 11 or verse 12 or verse 13. But I am still in verse 5 and uh, I believe the Lord that at the end of this series, every good thing the Lord hoped to do in his church, he will do it in Jesus' name. And I'm going to concentrate on this Hebrew chapter 11 for some time. And those of us in our regions and all of that, that doesn't mean that the new message that is coming for the new months and then you're not going to preach it, you go back to Hebrew. No, you will just concentrate and keep going as the new messages come. But I, I will need to finish this Hebrew. And I pray that at the end of the day, a book uh, will be printed and you have a copy for yourself. So you'll be able to know what faith is truly up to. And what faith is truly is. And at the end of the day, end of this series, God will bless you, you did, in Jesus' name. Last Sunday we looked at faith for more. We looked at faith for more. There we looked at the life of Cain and Abel. And we tried to see who was Abel and who is Cain. And we're able to treat that. Today, we're looking at the message, faith for translation. Faith for translation. Now, this is the faith that translated you. It takes you from one level to the other. It takes you from nothing to something. It takes you from zero point to some one point. You know, as you go around, why do we need faith? Faith is a drive. Faith takes you forward. Faith is the oil in your Christian life. For without faith is impossible. So faith is a substance. Faith is an evidence. Faith is a weakness. A weakness to what you need to be and where you are going to be and what you will always be. That's faith. And faith is not emotion. Faith is not confidence. Faith is not competence, even. Faith is divine. Faith takes you, faith drives you. And so we are looking at the second person in that series. As we look at the life of Abraham, and we see his life of Abraham and the life of Adam, at the first point, and then second point, and then we look at the life of Abel and Cain. Now we are coming to look at the life of Enoch in Hebrews 11 in verse 5. Hebrews 11 verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translations he had these testimonies that he pleased God, that he please God. Now, that was personal. So, because it was personal, we are going to look at three points in this message. Number one, the life of Enoch. The life of Enoch. Point number two, the translation of Enoch. The translation of Enoch. And then point number three, the testimonies of Enoch. The testimonies of Enoch. Now, we look at 
point number one. The life of Enoch. Now, let's look at that text again. Chapter 11, verse 5. Like you know, like you tell, you can tell, this is a Bible church. And so you need to open the pages of the scriptures and take notes if you can. And that will be wonderful. Now, in verse 5, by faith, Enoch. That is what I want to look at now. You can see the name was so pronounced. The name was so renounced. By faith, Enoch. Let's look at that life of Enoch. As I look at the life of Enoch, I saw something in the life of Enoch. What was that? He walked with God. What makes his name pronounced? He walked with God. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Enoch walked with God. Now, there is something I want you to balance there. Every man is known by what he does. Now, so Enoch was pronounced by what he does. Meaning that if he has not worked with God, his name wouldn't have been pronounced. So, your name ought to be pronounced by what you do, by value you bring. Enoch's name was not pronounced because his name was called Enoch. The Bible says he walked with God. On that basis, his name was pronounced. So, if God needs to pronounce some names today, what are you carrying on your hand that we, we trigger God to mention your name? In Genesis 5, Genesis 5, he walked with God. In Genesis 5, verse 24. Genesis 5, verse 24. And Enoch, what is the qualification there? Walked with God. Simple. Now, as you trace the Bible, you're going to see Adam. And Adam, what did he do? He commits sin. He disobeyed God. And Abraham, what did he do? So, every man that was pronounced in the Bible was qualified with an act. So, therefore, your act determine what your name becomes. If you are a thief, and XYZ is a thief, your name must be qualified by what you do. If you are in a church, in a great commission, and you are doing well, people will tend to know you. Why? They say, we know that pastor is a fire. Now, so your act, your attitude pronounces you. And I'm praying that your own life and your attitude will bring your name in Jesus' name. But the major thing here is he walked with God. Meaning that anybody can walk with anything. There are people that walk with themselves or walk for themselves. Or also walk for their belly. But this man walked with God. Let's see what he said in Jude. In the book of Jude chapter 1. Walk with God, brother, I, I, I beg of you, walk with God. Look up here first. Walk with God. Don't walk for God. Okay, so I will explain that to you. You know, many times people walk for God. They say, I'm walking for God. Then you are hired. Because working for meaning, there is a condition attached to working for. I'm working for you so that you can do this. I'm working with meaning that we are friends. We are co-laborers. We want to see that thing work out. 
Enoch did not work for God. He do what? Work with God. He was interested in what God was doing. He wants to work side by side with God. He wants to be like God. He wants to labor like God. He wants to get things done like God. When you walk like God, you talk like God. When you walk like God, you act like God. See Bible, walking with God. Genesis 6. Walk with God, I beg you. It, is, it pays. It pays to walk with God. If you can do that, you'll be happy. You'll be glad you are doing it. Walk with God. Take the walk as you are walk. See God. See him. You want to sweep the church. See God. You want to help others. See God. You want to render assistance. See God. Just see that you are doing the walk with God. In Genesis 6. I'm looking at verse 9. In verse 9. These are the generation of Noah. See another man. Noah was a what? That is the first step. And the word again? Perfect. In his what? Generation. Look at the next word. What happened to him? He walked. He walked with God. He was moving on a daily basis with God. He walked. They don't fall hand with God. They walked with God. They don't sleep with God. They walk with God. God is not a liability. Don't be a liability in the church. God is an asset. Those who walk with God brought value to tables. He walks with God. See verse 17. In verse 17, chapter 6, verse 17. Genesis. Look at verse 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the what? Bread of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall do what? Die. And then the man knew that and he was walking with God. But now look at chapter 6, chapter 17 of Genesis. Chapter 17. Look at chapter 17 of Genesis in verse 24. Leaves chapter 17. Go straight to chapter 24 for time. In chapter 24, verse 40. 24 of Genesis in verse 40. 24 verse 40. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I do what? Every day God is seeing me doing what? Walk. The Lord before whom I do what? I walk. We send his angels with what? With thee. And do what again? Prosper thy ways. Who is talking here? Abraham talking to his son, Isaac. You are going to look for a wife. I know that God before whom I walked. If you are praying, do you have anything to tell God? To say, God, look at what I've done based on this. Prosper my son. That was the day I aborted a, a, a flight and we wanted to land in Abuja. We couldn't land. It was so bad. We took off to Kaduna to land. We refused to land. Almost on the ground, they say, no, you can't land. 
We took us up again. We came back to Abuja to learn it was difficult. And at that point, I told God, that's okay. So if I go now, who will do this work? You, you know I'm the one doing this work. I don't even have somebody I can ask now to take over. So, so you just want me to go like that. So this means he has ended. No problem. And a voice spoke to my heart. You cannot die now. So I relaxed. They took us off and they said, okay, the only place we can land is Lagos. Well, on our way to Lagos, they said, okay, we should return back to Abuja that the line is clear for us to land. Everybody was already crying. Even those people that have never called Jesus before, they were calling Jesus. <laughs> Give me amen. amen. When you walk with God, you have reasons to talk to God. Am I talking to you? You have what to quote God for. When things is not working, you bring God to action. You tell him, look, I have done this for you. I do this with you. Bring this thing to work for me. You have reasons because you have worked with him. You have labored with him. You will labor for God in Jesus' name. <laughs> Did you know why when people are serving God, they don't do work? Did you know why? No, talk to me, everybody. Did you know why when people are working for God, most people does not do work? Do you know why? Good. Because they don't see it as work. They don't see it as work. That was why when Jesus was talking, he said, I must do what? Walk. The work of him that sent me. He knows that it's a walk. So if they break 6 a.m., it's off for the walk. If he's sitting down and there is crowd on his head, he knows he's walking. It's a walk. You walk as though there is no any other day for you to walk again. That is why when you lectures in the in the school, in the Bible school, you tell the people. And you tell them. Every message you preach is your last message. Every message you preach is what? Your last message. So therefore, as you are preparing the message, you are preparing it as though there is no any other message you are going to preach again. Because you could finish preaching that day and be called to glory that day. The one that will be your last message, you know. So why are you doing it with casualty? What if the one that be your last message was the one you do with casualty? And then they now play it. They say, look at his last message. And everybody that was there say, now this thing will be the priest. Now God say, you don't go. <laughs> God will help you and make you wise. You are not giving me amen. Malachi chapter 2. In verse 6. The law of truth was in his mouth. And iniquity was not found in his lips. There is a man walking with God. He preached the truth. He lives the truth. He followed the truth. He walked the truth. Now, now see Bible. He also do what? Walk with me in what? In peace. He doesn't walk with me fighting people, quarreling people, you know, debating, you know, arguing, you know, looking for who to pull down, looking for who to say lie against. He walks with me in peace. It's Bible. It's Bible. He walks with me. But the work he's doing with me, there is peace. He's working with me. He's carrying people in peace. 
They give you small work to do now. You are scattering everybody. Put in karat. Put in karat. You want to go now, you go. Go now, now, now let you be this. You want to go, you go. You did not bring that person to church. You don't have the power to stand before somebody and say, if you want to go, go now. I better make gonna live under. You are fake. You are not a leader. You are not even supposed to say anything that has to do with God. You see a soul God brought to the church. Through you, the person left the church. You are king. You are king. Go and look for that person. Go and look for that person. You become a stumbling block to people that want to serve God. You serve with peace. You serve with everything that has to do with joy. Point number two. The translation of Enoch. When you look at the life of Enoch, what qualified the name of Enoch? Everybody? Talk to me, my friend. Talk to me, my friend. That was what qualified that name. So, if you are looking at the life of Enoch, what was his life? It was a life walking with God. Two, the translation of Enoch. In our text, go back to our text again, Hebrews. And as I say, you can be going. Be going ahead of me. I'm coming. Small, small. I'm coming. Meet you. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, by faith, Enoch, that's what we just finished, was what? Translated. It was translated. Because he walked with God, God took him from nothing and take him and make him something. It was translated. Because he walked with God, his life becomes a different life altogether. Because he walks with God, he experiences what other Christians did not experience. Meaning that all of us could be in the same church. And some could have a very different experience from one another. The man walks with God and was translated. And was translated. Was people there in that generation? Talk to me, my friend. How many of them were translated? See, see. One million people can be serving God, and God will pick one person and bless him. Why? He's walking with God. God looked at your heart before he started looking at your eye and looking at your face. <laughs> if you have passion for his work, he knows it. If you are more concerned about his work, he knows it. If you are not, he knows it. Enoch was translated. Genesis chapter 5 was translated. He was. And I'll prove it to you from the Bible. He was. He was. It's not a story. He was translated. In Genesis 5, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, that's the line. And he was not, meaning that they looked for him, they couldn't see him. He was not. They found him, they couldn't see him. He was with them. They start sourcing for him, they couldn't see him. And I will show you that, that he was not. And I will show you. When they start looking for him, they couldn't see him. In fact, at the time, they get 50 men for three days. Don't eat. Be looking for Enoch. Nobody could see him. He was not. 
It was translated. Very soon it will happen. Rapture is coming. You will look for me. You won't see me. I'm walking. And so when once beep, 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 the trumpet shall sound, we are off. You come to church, only you go play this band. When once rapture takes place, no church. Church has ended. You come here, let's. Now you will come in one sweep church that time, you go tired. You go, you go sweep church, no Holy Ghost again, no church. You're on your own. A time is coming when the door will be open. You come here, you call God. We don't go. God, no day here again. We don't go. You're on your own. Rapture will take place. It can take place anytime. It could be today. Now, now. And we're going. When once rapture take place, bah, all this one younger don't end. May they do me follow up to come to church. It don't end. You know they see me again. General overseer don't end. The regional pastor don't end. Coat don't expire. We did for another clue. I'm telling you the truth. He was not See, see Bible verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Look at it. For God do what? Took him. God took him. See Bible. In see Elijah. See Elijah. Another man. In 2 King chapter 2, verse 11. Second king. Yeah, we don't say we, we don't talk story here. Yeah. Bible. See Bible. In second king, chapter two, verse what? Eleven. See verse eleven. Verse eleven. And it came to pass as they still went on and talk. Two of them were talking. They were going on. They were talking. They were going on. That behold, there do what? Appeared a shadows of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. You, you can see something here. Him and Elisha was going. They were going. They thought that they were going to church together. They thought that they were going for the gospel together. They just returned from the camp, camp of the prophets. And as they were going, the shadows came, parted two of them, said, my friend, you, you are not time to come. This one is time to come. The reward is with him. It will reward to every man according to what you have done. That two of us used to go to the same church. It does not make two of us equal. My service will parted me different from you. We could be sleeping in the same room. That doesn't make two of us equal. We could also answer the same name, General Overseer. That doesn't make two of us equal. What parted people is what they bring to God. What will make you rapturable is what you do today. Not what you will do after rapture. That you are playing with your Christian life and you think you can be raptured. Not possible. Rapture is not in just mere dancing and clapping. No. Rapture is in the attitude. It's in the Christian life. No problem. Everybody can do what they want to do. Today, people are busy licking shoes, busy, busy breaking coconut, busy doing all manner of nonsense. No problem. When the main time come, God will part us. You know who he will part aside. You know who he will part and took away. And the time, nobody knows it. That's the most dangerous part of it. It could be when you just start quarreling, finish with your husband. The rapture will come. All the earring we don't remove for many years could just turn to fake. See, what shall it profit a man after you have lost everything, everything? 
You, you know what you ought to have done in life. You, you know the grammar you ought to have been playing. You live your life now, a young, vibrant man. You're vibrant. And yet, you don't have a same partner. After you lost all of that, you still lost seven. For carelessness. After you lost enjoying beer, at least going to the beer parlor and cross your leg and do and you lost everything. The jolly jolly way that they do, you know if you do. Nothing. And at the end of the day, you still lost seven. For carelessness. Because you fail to walk with God. How long will you be in between two opinions? You can't be serving God and be mammoning. You are either serving God or you drop God. And if you want to serve God, why not serve him and serve him where? I told, this, told somebody, I said, come my friend, do you think I'm joking? And if you understand this, you won't joke with me. You will know I'm not joking. You know why? My mates are the people going for governorship. What will I be doing with this pulpit? And after I'm on the pulpit, I've lost all of that, lost everything. You play with the auditorium, you play with the church, you play with service, you worship in a dark place, and then you expect me to be happy with you. What will make me happy with you? A church is a place for service and a place for working with God. There must be an act that will part you and part me. If I preach everything and my life is not in order, after I lost everything in the world, I will still lose eternity. God is not going to give me key to come to heaven because I'm a general overseer. After all, many were called, few were chosen. And as I said to them on that day, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I know you not. That day is coming. The day of reward is coming. The day God will pay everybody is coming for whatever services you render. That day is coming. I pray God help me to just preach this message. God help me to just preach this message. Look at Psalm 89. Psalm 89. It's very, very important for us to know that there is a day of transiliation. The day of rapture is coming. There is a day of transiliation. In Psalm 89, I want to read verse 48. 48. Are we there, church? Talk to me. Are we there? Look at it. What man is he that liveth and shall not see dead? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Jesus answered him that question. David says, Are there going to be any man on earth that will die, that will not die and go to grave? Jesus answered him that question. Let me show you. In John 8, St. John's 8, Jesus answered that question. Let's see it. In St. John's 8, if you like, sleep. You see this message? I must, fin I must finish it. This one, I must finish it. I must finish this one. Because it's important. It's very, very important. In St. John's 8, C8 of John. St. John's 8. In St. John's 8, look at verse 51 and 52. 51. The very word of Jesus. See it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my word, saying, he shall never do what? C8. 
see death. So it's possible there are people that will not see death. The psalmist says, God, is it possible that a man you created will leave this world without seeing death? Jesus answered him, yes. Those ones that will keep my saying and walk before me, they will not see death. Which means they will be rapturable. In verse 52, then said the Jew unto him, now we know that thou art a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And that says, if a man keep my saying, he shall never test of death. Jesus answered them again. In chapter 5, chapter 5 of John, Jesus answered them again. Chapter 5 of John. In verse 24. Chapter 5. In verse 24. Look at verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my words, and believeth on him that sends me, has what, everybody? Everlasting life. And shall not, shall not, shall not come in to condemnation, but is what? Pass from death to what? To life! Is translated from death to life. St. John's 11. See Bible. St. John's 11 is translated is moved from death to life. St. John's 11 in verse 26 St. John's 11 verse 26 in verse 26 and whosoever lives and believed in me shall do what? Never die. Believe thou this. Do you believe this? That rapture is possible? Look up here. If you don't believe this, carry your Bible and leave church. You don't have any reason for going to church. If you don't believe that rapture will take place, you are wasting your time with God. You are going to club. You are not going to church. Any church that will not remind you of the rapture, leave that place. That is a club. Because what is the essence of church? Church is a bride waiting for the bridegroom. Church is a wife waiting for the husband. Jesus will soon come. And when he comes, how will he see you? If a man is going to marry a woman and only for you to come, you want to marry, you now come and see the woman, the baby like, <laughs> you will carry your good and go back. You will know this one can never be married again. He's insane already. His head is not correct. Marry somebody's head is not correct. Enoch was translated. How do we know? Because he was not. They looked for him. They couldn't find him. Let me show you from the Bible. In Genesis 5, verse 24, he was not. They checked for him. He was translated. He was translated. They looked for him. They found him. Sister, whether your husband is doing well or not, Focus. Christianity is you. Children, whether your parents are doing well or not, focus. Christianity is you. It's all about me. It's all about you. 
is personal. Jesus says, Woe to him that is offended in me. <laughs> there are people walking under that woe. They are offended in the church. Woe is him that is offended. <laughs> All right. Genesis 5, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Okay. All right. In 2 Kings chapter 2. He was not. Let's see. Second King chapter 2. He was not. Look for him. They check for him. Nobody see him. And up to tomorrow, nobody sees him. But there is a day we are going to see him. And I will sit with him. I will say, oh boy, but I've been preaching about you every day. We we'll check ourselves. We we'll rejoice. He's alive. Enoch is alive. It's not dead. It's there alive. There are the people coordinating the mansions. They are dead. When I get there, I will tell him, oh boy, how did you do it? He will ask me, how did you do it that you come here? He will laugh. Because I will meet him. I will meet Abraham. They are all alive. They are dead. When was the translation take place? You are not seeing my face again. Those are the faces I will be seeing. There is always a congregation after congregation. <laughs> That's why if you are wise, you won't be fighting anybody over any congregation here. You know why? Because there is congregation after congregation. If you were preaching to congregation here, when you finish, there is a congregation waiting for you. Where only praise and singing. That's why those of you who doesn't know how to sing, I pity you. Come and learn it. Because there, we will sing more and praise more. And preach very little. I will see you in heaven. Amen. You won't miss heaven. Amen. It's very, very important. Let that consciousness always be in you. The rapture can take place. At that time, but your eyes red, just remember, rapture can take place. We take point three now so we can pray. The testimonies of Enoch. The testimonies of Enoch. What was the testimony of Enoch? That he pleased God. He pleased God. He pleased God so much. Everything he was doing, he was only doing what will be pleased in the eye of God. He pleased God. I pray that you will do things that will please God in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, 8 and 9. Romans 8, 8 and 9. I do that one, I do another two scriptures. Then we'll pray now. Romans 8. In Romans 8, verse what, everybody? 8 and 9. Look at 8. So then, they that are in the flesh, they cannot do what? Not possible. The man was not in the flesh, so he can please God. God is spirit. And people that must please God must be born again. They must have been translated. They must walk 
in the spirit. They must see with the eye of the spirit. Anytime your emotions still control you, you are not in the spirit. Conditions does not control them. What control them is the spirit. So they see from the spirit. They can see things from the point of the spirit. At that level, they will please God. Look at verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ. What is the next word? He's, he's, he's not even born again. He's carrying the spirit of error. It's not of ease. First Thessalonica chapter 2. It's not of ease. Because he doesn't carry the spirit of Christ. It's not of ease. It's not of ease. Oh Lord. First Thessalonica chapter 2 in verse 4. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Look up here. Gospel was given to you in trust. My friend, you did not deserve carrying this thing you are carrying. God gave it to you in trust. You are joking with it because he doesn't know what you are carrying. God gave it to you in trust. Did you see that in the Bible? Say it was given to you in trust. That position we gave to you, we gave to you on trust. And now, you are turning us like this. You are playing games with us. It's given to you in trust. The worst thing anybody can do is to betray trust. Something given to you in trust and you are fighting it. But as we were allowed of God to be put in with trust, in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as what? Pleasing men. That is why I will not preach what you will like. Because I know this is given to me in trust and I will not betray the trust. So many are carrying it and they are betraying the trust. God gave it to them. They are using it for money making. They are using it for anything. It's given to us in trust. But God which tries where our hearts. I'll take the last scripture we pray now. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. You will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. You will please God. You will walk with God. On these two conditions, God will rapture you. First John chapter 3, in verse 22. And whosoever, and whatsoever, we asked, we receive of him, because we keep his what? Commandment. Look at it again. And do those things that are what? Pleasing where? In his side. That is the only condition. That God grants us answer to our prayer is on the condition that we are doing only those things that are pleasing in his side. So when somebody goes to church and he's doing all manner of kind of sin in the church and he say God blesses him, he's a criminal. Only him know what he's doing. Only him know what he's doing. 
Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. The condition for prayer answered is pleasing God. Let's stand up for prayers. Stand up for prayers. I'd like you to go to God in prayers today. You have heard this message. What do you have to tell God? Let me allow you to just pray. Can you take this message back to God and talk to the Lord in prayers? He walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Are you walking with God? Can you make a vow today? Can you make a promise today? Can you tell the Lord, oh Lord, I'm coming back to work for you. No man can stop me working for you. Nobody can stop me working for you. I want to work with you. Can you make some promises to God? Can you change your mindset? Can you tell him how much you want to serve? How much you want to work from now? Even when it's not convenient. Even when there's nobody there to supervise you. If you cannot pray this prayer, then I wonder which prayer you will pray. I wonder. I want to walk with God. Lord, I repent of my stubbornness and I'm willing to come back. I'm willing to come back. Willing to come back to walk with you. Brother, walk with God. Sister, walk with God. God is ready. Walk with Him. Walk with Him. Work with him, he will carry you through. Work with him, I beg you. Work with him. Say, Lord, take up everything. Take up everything. Take up everything, Lord. Take up everything, Lord. I just want to walk with you. In newness of life, I just want to walk with you. In fullness of life, I just want to walk with you. In everything, I just want to walk with you. Oh Lord. Brother, where are you? Can't you cry to the Lord today? Can't you tell him, take all. Take all. Take all. Take my time. Take all. Take my life. Take all. Take my finances. Take all. Take my talents. Take all. Take my treasure. Take all. I'm available. How many times did you come for service in a week? How many times? How many times did you preach? How many times? How many times did you look for somebody? How many times? 
How many times did you take this work serious? How many times? It will pay you by what you do. It will pay me by what I do. It will pay us by what we do. It will not pay you different from what you pay me. It will pay me by what I do. By what I bring to the table. That is what it will pay me for. Why not cry to God? I say, God, I don't want to miss rapture. I don't want to miss rapture. Anything you need to see so out of my life, do it today. Anything you need to take away, take it away. I don't want to lose rapture. I don't want to miss rapture. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven, Lord. Help me. If you cannot pray this prayer, then you don't know why you are in church. If you miss heaven, you will cry. If you miss rapture, the cry you will cry. Trust me. You will regret it with your entire life. If you miss rapture, that is when you will know That the guy boy thing doesn't take you anywhere. That is where you will know that the guy get thing doesn't take you anywhere. That is where you will know that Christianity was actually a reality, not a fake. Jesus is coming, rapture is coming. It may take place anytime. It may happen any moment. Where will you be? When the trumpets are shown. Where will you be? That will translate you from earth to heaven. The faith that will make you make rapture. That is the faith today. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. It's better you lost everything on earth. And make it up to rapture. Than having everything on earth. And lost heaven finally. that number if rapture come today are you one of us it's your name written down in the book of life are you born again are you saved If you cannot pray this prayer, then I pity you. If you cannot cry to the Lord and say, Today, make my name among those. Get my name written there. I'm deceived by the world.
Oh, <laughs> ah, Lord. 